his last was in 0-2. Don't mention that either. He beat me and Ebon quarter semis and beat Andre Agassi in the finals. And he's like Joe DiMaggio for uh, our sport. He left winning the Open. Let's not forget that. It's age 31. 30. And he had gone through a dry spell right before that where he'd gone a, a more than two years without winning, not, not just a slam, but a tournament of any kind. Well, he didn't care a whole lot at that stage about tournaments, although it was irritating, but he wanted the big one. But to go out and win it the way he did, shut everybody up, and then shut it down, retire, I mean, there's not many people that can say that. 2002, he beat uh, Roddick in the quarterfinals, Shane Shalkin in the semis, and then Agassi in that memorable final, and then took the ball and walked away. Name the last player you can think of. You know, it's like Jim Brown in football. There's Joe DiMaggio in baseball that left at sort of this incredible high. It's very few and far between. And this is where he's got the huge edge. He's just, he's, he, looks, he looks like he's still moving well. Roger Federer turning 30 right about now. I know he's pointing towards next year, the Olympics in, in London at Wimbledon. And has he got another one in him? In his I, I think he does. 15 all. It, it ain't going to be easy, though. You know, they're going to start asking more and more questions, particularly if he doesn't win the Open next couple weeks. And as uh, you hear more about it, it starts to get inside your head. Not to mention, the, imagine him at 30. It's like Yvonne playing Pete. He's got to deal with the likes of Djokovic. You know, have you ever seen a guy move better on the court than him? Oh, just mismeasure. Don't, don't hit the bracket or you're going to have to come over here. Lendl has, of course, his own glory here in New York. He won the three straight U.S. Open titles, 85 to 87. And the fact that he made eight straight finals, that's a pretty 15. remarkable achievement. That's one of the all-time records in uh, our sport. I mean, obviously, uh, Federer had the 23 straight semis are better and phenomenal record. But you get eight straight U.S. Open finals. That's amazing Game to Lendl. put him on there. Junior Bridge, Robert F. Kennedy Bridge, excuse me. And it's, it's uh, you know, I want to bring the buzz back to our sport and to New York. This is the greatest city in the world. Um, last player that made it big New out balls. of this area was uh, my brother 25 years ago. So I'd like to see some people making it from here. Everyone says you got to move to Florida, Texas, California. And that option is there, but I'd like to provide an alternative. I know for me personally, I would, would have had a tough time leaving my parents at such a young age and living away from home. And I think that that's something that uh, hopefully I can bring to the table and, and, and be that type of inspirational leader that hopefully the kids will feed off and energize themselves. Well, between your brother doing what he's doing with the USTA and, and what you're doing with that academy, your family, we've had some brother teams here tonight. Your brother team has given back graciously to this game. Well, you, you realize as you get older, the perspective gets better, how lucky you are. This is why these guys, you know, they're having fun right now. I'd like to see them step it up intensity-wise. You really, as you, you say, okay, we've got our feet wet. It's for all now. And let's see. Let's go go for it. That skids off the line. Pete hit a slider ace to open this game. Starting to find it. Easier to place the ball with wood, I found. So you can really go for the lines more. So that type of serve. I mean, he's not hitting it very hard, but he's placing it well. Making Lendl reach out wide. He always loved to hit that running forehand, did Yvonne. Well, so did Pete. Yeah, yeah, right. See, both of these guys. You know, so much made of that Djokovic winning streak earlier this year. Lendl had his own 44 match winning streak back in 1982. That's, I think, the same number that Djokovic wound up with. No, he got 43, I believe, because he had 41 and the two Davis Cup. I believe if you count the match where the guy defaulted, he'd get the 44. He didn't, he got screwed a little. count that, yeah, right. He sort of got, to me, because he would have tied my best start for the year, and because the guy default, Wait, I owe the guy like two cases of Italian wine or whatever, I, or I, more. I, I that assume that's forthcoming. <laughs> of course. 
Velas has the all time record. 46 in 1977. Yeah, the biggest 49. forehand of the night from Wendell. Velas lost that record at the uh, after the open where the old, I don't know if you remember the spaghetti racket, which is sort of like the strings they use. And he was playing Nastasi, who just picked it up, like Pete said an hour ago. And beat her. Two sets of love up, best of five. He walked off the court and they banned it the next day, the spaghetti strings. When will they ban this? stuff they're using now I think we're stuck with it <laughs> yeah of course you're right I think Pete's gonna be very happy to, to get his modern racket with that Luxalon string that helps bring his back end into the court as soon as he can yes what about Lendl he's, he's uh, starting to play a little bit more there were a couple of years there where he didn't play a lot of tennis and, and he focused a lot on golf he's got a couple of daughters who play competitive collegiate golf he, he was out on the celebrity tour for a while Are, does it do your heart good to see one of your rivals get back uh, into the game a little bit more? Well, I, I, I think it was about 15 years I wanted a piece of Devon again, you know, to get him back out there. And uh, he had some back issues for quite a long time. And uh, I think eventually, Brett, he started to miss the game more than he realized, as players often do. And, um, you know, he started to work out and do it more regularly. Obviously, in a sport like this, you got to do it constantly. And you can see the difference uh, that... Uh, He's in better shape than he was, but you've got to really work awfully hard, particularly as you get older, to get yourself in a position where you even have a chance. So I, I, I'd be interesting to see in the next couple of years how much he continues to do it. Because you, you break the big 5-0, and then you're playing it, you go, wow, God, 40 seems awful young. <laughs> he won 94 singles titles, over 1,000 matches. He was a literally a machine, both in how much he played, how much he won, and, and just the consistency of his stroke production. Well, he was the Ivan Drago of the tennis tour, as far as I was concerned. I mean, he was uh, he took the the fitness parts to all the levels, like Harry Hopman, oh. the guy who worked with me when I was a kid. He got the Australians in great shape, and Ivan certainly took advantage of that, the desire. I mean, that's like a talent. That's like having a San Francisco, the ability to give so much of yourself because because he got in such great shape mentally he became a lot tougher so certainly a lesson to be learned for you guys out there kids that want to be and this you got to be fitter than ever let's be honest Game San Five games but it's sold. frustrating when you can't do the things you used to do obviously like move out of the way of a serve and, you know hit into your body you know beat, rub it in, in there a little I know you're getting ready for the 2011 champion series this fall and you had uh, you had a couple injuries we saw you mm -hmm. go through that pain at the garden and then how are you from your we're going to call that a glute or a hamstring from well, you know it's a combination but it was a bit scary and um, it's Lit for sure. it makes you love it even more you know, when you're out, uh, to me, I mean, I just enjoyed just training, the training aspect. Oh, God, I wish I liked it that much before. <laughs> but that part of it, you, you, you miss low. just getting a good workout, the, still getting to compete a little bit. But, you know, I'm about halfway home. I'm hopefully a couple, two, three weeks I can get back to really start training. Because obviously, if I'm going to even have a prayer against a guy like Pete, if I were to play him, I better be like 100% ready to go. Look at that. Now he's he's showing how well he's still moving. You you, you better get fit, by the way, because 2011 Champion Series, by the way, is coming to 12 cities in September and October. Is you, Sampras, Agassi, uh, Chang, a little uh, I think we got a little Edberg in there, a little Vlander maybe, a little Borg. A uh, little bit, you know. It's going to be awesome. I think it's it's we're excited about it. See if we can really do something big with that. 1530. Um, it was unbelievable to be at Madison Square Garden. Now, I grew up in Queens. I've lived in Manhattan for 30 something years. I went to the garden since I was eight years old. So this meant a lot to me to get out there and, and play Yvonne. And those of us who are from New York saw you get a little choked up that night when you had to bow out of that match. And, and I, I think we could see legitimately how much it meant to you to play in that oh, match. It meant the world to me. I mean, there was an excess of 17,000 people. I was. I would have been loved to play this match, you know, and we're at the Armory on 26th Street. I mean, I, they, they used to play some tennis here. You know, guys like Laver and uh, maybe even, I, I believe Don, as back as the 30s, Don Budge played here. So there's a history of tennis. 
By the way, Peach is broken. Yeah. Game six. He was up a break early in the set, and he gave it back, and now he's up a break again. Come back, try to serve this thing out. Sampras trying to make it two wins for the Wood tonight. Back to New York in a second. Against Luke and Murphy Jensen, and Pete's got a chance to do it here. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he loses serve the way he's serving. I mean, he's serving pretty well. That's a pretty big serve there. Just wide. We saw the earlier a few moments ago. He said it was the best forehand Lendl had hit. That was easily his best backhand. Pete's not wasting any time. It's amazing the volume of tennis that Yvonne Lendl used to play. Because he, he was at a, there was a time when he was doing Grand Prix and WCT and he won 10 titles in 81, 15 titles in 82, 11 titles in 85, 10 titles in 89. Guys aren't doing that anymore. And Djokovic could do it this year, but that's pretty unusual. Uh, he played, didn't play doubles, uh, which helped help to some extent. And because he did, he won so many events and so many slams not playing that uh, guys like Pete, well, I don't need to play doubles either. Borg was the first guy that did that. 40, That's why Pete Sampras had the record till Roger Federer came along. That is an awesome serve, yeah. okay? And he's had 45 couple match points. He's let it go a little bit in this game on his serve. And finishes it off with the ace up the tee. And there goes the wood frame look out in the crowd. <laughs> Pete Sampras won't be needing that anymore. 7-5, another victory for the wood. God bless America. <laughs> John McEnroe has been screaming for the return of Wood Racket yes. Tennis for years and finally something to back up his idea. We'll be back and talk to Pete and Yvonne after this. It's the DirecTV Old School Challenge. Man. All right, Brett. All right, Pistol Pete. Uh, first of all, it's good to see you in the Big Apple, number one. Tell me what you think of the Wood Racket, this whole challenge thing. Uh, I had fun tonight. Uh, it wasn't easy. Obviously, I was struggling a little bit. But I can still serve pretty well with it. Um, and, the guy, and the game's obviously changed in the past 20 years. But I, I grew up with the wood racket. Um, it's not easy, but uh, I still have fun. You had two rackets, I noticed. They were both different. So tell me about that. <laughs> well, I had this old staff racket. And I had a Donne racket. And one was a little bit heavier. One was light. And I just sort of winged it. I hit one serve with the heavy one. And I gave it to this kid in the crowd. Uh, it wasn't feeling too good. So I stuck with the Donne, the old Borg racket. And um, you know, it's, it wasn't easy. Yvonne was a, he was a nice guy out there to, you know, to meet tonight, and I hope, hope the crowd enjoyed it. A little bit loud in here, but uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, Yvonne, let me get you in on this. Um, what do you think of the crowd? I mean, you know, we were sort of a sticklers for quiet, and it seemed like it was a little noisy, like a baseball game. Yeah, I, I forgot what it used to be when I played. It's a long time ago, and I'm over 50, so my memory is gone. <laughs> Tell me about it. What was your, can you remember what your plan was coming in to play Pete with the wood racket. Did you have a plan? I, I was trying to remember how it was uh, when I was growing up playing with a wooden racket. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, Pete can serve with anything. We know that. And uh, I knew that coming in. And, uh, and uh, Pete just uh, absorbs power really well. So uh, when you give him pace, he can block it and take advantage of it and make it come back fast. Yeah, Pete, what was your uh, game plan? I mean, you obviously couldn't serve as big, but that last game when you served it out, you looked like you were looked pretty good. Yeah. So what was the plan otherwise? Well, it's, it's uh, like it always is for me. I just want to get to the net. The game I broke, Yvonne, I came, I came in a few times, chipped and charged, uh, served one on both serves. I, I play one speed, and that's to get in. Uh, and with this, with, you know, as far as this wood racket, I, it was hard to stay back and hit ground strokes, so I decided to come in. Uh, well, before we uh, wrap this up, we want to just make sure I know that you guys – Yvonne's got eight Wimbledon, uh, eight Wimbledon's, uh, eight majors. You got 14. You may want to have this, okay? This young lady wants to present you with this you. old school challenge at the Army. This is historic. You know, they play tennis events here back in the 20s and 30s. Uh, players that we didn't see a whole lot of. So hopefully the players appreciated that these two great champions came out tonight. Yvonne Lendl here. Pete Sampras. Thank you. CeeLo, get ready, okay? <laughs> Back to you, Brett.